The Test of Personal Hardship Nehemiah, Nehemiah and the people of Jerusalem, they started rebuilding the walls and everything was going together fine. Sanballat and Tobiah, you know, the enemies that were trying to stop Nehemiah from rebuilding back in Jerusalem, uh, they tried to stop them that Nehemiah organized the people to arm themselves to continue working. You can read in Nehemiah chapters 3 and 4 about this. The people were working and they were building and everything, but then they'd have to stop because their people were coming against them. They'd have to stop again and again to try to protect themselves. And it became a huge problem to them. They, some of the people wanted to give up. and They were complaining. They were having money problems. You know, they needed to work. They needed to find food. And, and this was during the time of the famine also. So there wasn't much food anyway. Some of the families, they even had to, uh, farmers, they had to mortgage their farms. Again, because they needed money because it was the time of the famine. So it was a very difficult time. We read about this in Nehemiah 5, verses 1 through 5. You know, there were some people that refused to give money to support the rebuilding of the walls. Why? Because they wanted to amass a fortune for themselves in grain. Now there arose a great outcry of the people and of their wives against their Jewish brothers. For there were those who said, With our sons and our daughters we are many, so let us get grain that we may eat and keep alive. That's often the reason few people give money today in the church. There are people today that complain they don't have enough money to give to the church. Is this the truth? Is this the real reason? No. The real reason is because they're not willing to give up certain things in their lifestyle. For example, it could be going out to eat really often instead of staying at home and cooking more. Another example is going simply to the car wash. You could just stay home and wash your car yourself. Save money. Support the work of the church. We tend to think that, you know, we don't have enough money to, to support missionaries, but stop and think and be careful. Maybe the Lord wants you to give up some things, you know, that you really don't need and support to expand God's kingdom. Should we complain about that? No. Yes, there are things that happen when money becomes tight. Uh, sometimes people lose their job and there's something like that. There's other reasons. But these people back then, they were charging interest to their brothers and sisters in Christ at a high rate. And this was happening to the people, and they were complaining to Nehemiah about this, that they were in a poor situation. And Nehemiah, he called together the rich Jewish leaders, and he called them together, and he reprimanded them about this, charging too high of an interest to their brothers and sisters. We can read about this in verses 6 through 13. The Bible teaches about this. I was very angry when I heard their outcry in these words. I took counsel with myself, and I brought charges against the nobles and the officials. I said to them, You are exacting interest each from his brother. And I held a great assembly against them, and said to them, We, as far as we are able, have bought back our Jewish brothers, who have been sold to the nations. But you even sell your brothers that they may be sold to us. They were silent and could not find a word to say. You shall not charge interest on loans to your brother, interest on money, interest on food, interest on anything that is lent for interest. You may charge a foreigner interest, but you may not charge your brother interest, that the Lord your God may bless you in all that you undertake in the land that you are entering to take possession of. You know, we've learned that through reformation, change of turning from sin and turning to God's word, and Nehemiah was discussing just this, convincing the people they needed to reform themselves, to change themselves, if they did not follow the law, and just some of them part of the law and some of them completely ignoring it, if they were not willing to obey the law, you know, they would not, they would not be changed. God doesn't need our time and money to advance his kingdom. No, he is strong. Now question, 
do you think that God could, could find another way to support and to advance his kingdom from beginning of earth to the end? Of course. But he has called us himself. He is testing us. He is testing us. And we need to prove faithful that we cherish him more than we cherish things. We need to be faithful to his call and to believe that he will take care of all of our needs. He will. Why? Because he loves us. Hello. I have a question. Of the people who attend church regularly, they go on Sundays, they're involved in Sunday school, the worship services, what percentage of them do you think tithe regularly? 5%. That's it. You know, maybe you say, I know the Bible and I love the Lord. And I'm a strong Christian. I have been for many years a strong Christian. Okay, well, ask yourself this question. Okay, well, where does most of your money go? On yourself or to expand God's kingdom? The Bible says something about this important. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Either here on earth or there in heaven. Coram deal.